Hey guys and welcome back to yet another Professor Oaks challenge. It's been quite a while since the last one and when the Diamond and Pearl remakes came out I thought, hey, why not give it a go? Without wasting any more time, let's get right to it. As usual, we shortly explain the rules of the Professor Oaks challenge, in case there's someone new joining in. So what is the challenge? To put it short, it basically means catching and evolving all Pokemon possible before you clear the next gym badge. This means for example training your starter Pokemon to the last evolution before taking on your first gym. While doing so glitches and exploits aren't allowed to use. And because of the spirit of the challenge, only one game is allowed to use. So no trade evolutions or event Pokemon. We immediately get hit by a huge dose of nostalgia and get greeted by Professor Roan. Funny enough there's also a Pokemon with him which will ruin everyone's day who's doing the challenge in these games. After naming our character and rival, and yeah I like to keep the original name, we find ourselves in Twin Leaf Town, our starting location. Mom reminds us to not go into the high grass because we don't have any Pokemon yet and we run into our rival Barry. Together we make our way to Route 201 and into Lake Verity. There we see Professor Roan and his assistant Dawn. After they left, Roan seemed to forgot his briefcase and so of course we break the only rule we had to follow to not go into the high grass and check out the briefcase. To save ourselves we pick a starter Pokemon, which in my case will be Turtwig, because it evolves the earliest. And even a few levels of difference can mean hours, especially in the first section. Later we meet up with Dawn and the Professor and are allowed to keep the Pokemon, together with a brand new Pokedex to fill up. And so our journey can begin. I returned back home so I can finally get ahead and got myself a Bidoof, Starly, Cricketot and Shinx on Route 201. In Jubilife I delivered a parcel to Barry and undertook the small quest to get a Poketch. At the west exit of the city a fisherman generously gives us the old rod, which we immediately put to good use to reel on a Magikarp. Because in the newer games you get experience for basically everything you do, including writing your name without spelling errors, Cricketot evolved into Cricketune at level 10. I caught a Badoo and a Zubat on Route 204 before making my way to the Ravage path. We cannot advance very far into the cave system yet as there is one of our roadblocks, but we will come back here later for some more Pokemon. Going east of Jubilife on Route 2 or 3, after kicking Barry's butt, we are free to continue our way to Orberg. Doing so I caught an Abra and entered Orberg gate. Here we get our first TM for Rock Smash, but we cannot use it until we defeat the first gym unfortunately. Nevertheless I caught a Geodude here and entered Orberg. Here we have the local mines, a place which I spent most of the time in the first section, because it's the place where you can get the most experience. Before that we have a quick chat with Rogue, because hey, why being in your gym as a gym leader, and make him go return to his workplace. In the mines I got myself an Onyx, and north of Urberg Gate, on Route 207, I got two Metrop, and there's also another roadblock so we cannot advance further. One of the matchups I actually traded for an Abra, even though I already have one, because training this one yields a lot more EXP. Because I was still one Pokemon missing, I returned back to the Ravaged Path, where Starly evolved into Staravia at level 14. And after an uncomfortably long search, I also got the elusive Psyduck, so I now have all Pokemon I can capture here. On to evolving them now. My starter evolved into Grotal at level 18, which took some hours of training in the Orberg mine. We traded Abra into Kadabra, Shinx into Luxio at level 15, Magikarp into Gyarados, our god Bidoof into Bibarel, Zubat into Golbat and soon afterwards into Crobat with enough friendship. Grotal into his final evolution Torterra, which took forever thanks to the fact that Pokemon get less EXP the higher the evolution and level. Geodude into Graveler, Luxio into Luxray, Machop into Machoke, and without any trading that's all we can get out of that evolution line. Staravia into Staraptor at level 34, Psyduck into Golduck, and finally Bidu into Rosalia after enough friendship during the daylight. With now 29 Pokemon we have all Pokemon we can get in this section, and we can now finally face Rock after about 47 hours of in-game time. We of course wipe the floor with him and get our first badge. Since we are now able to use Rock Smash, I made my way back to Jubilife again, where we run into the evil team of the region for the first time, 
Team Galactic and their stupid haircuts. Going HD surely didn't do them any favor. Anyways, after dealing with them, I continued to the Ravage Path once more to cross it into the northern part of Route 204 and Floromatan. If you own and played Sword and Shield and Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee, you can get a free Mew and Jirachi here. I did that, but realized that they cannot count it into the dex total, since it violates the one game rule somewhat. This kinda messed up with my Pokemon card numbers, but I corrected that error later. Just to make sure, if you are doing the challenge, you don't need them. On the eastern side of the town, there's the Windworks, but unfortunately, the Galactic Grunt won't let us pass, yet. We still stay here and capture a Buizel, a couple of Pachirisus for their pickup ability, and Shellos, before dealing with the Galactic problem. After I obtained the key to the Windworks, I fought my way through the building to face one of the Galactic Commanders, Mars. With her defeated, the way north to Route 205 is open, and so we make our way to Eterna Forest. In there we run into Cheryl, which accompanies us through the forest. Staying with her enables wild double battles, which was a lot more helpful in the original Diamond and Pearl, but soon we will get an even better training place. While being here anyways, I got a Boneri, Murkrow and Silicoon, which almost immediately evolved into a Beautifly. I continued catching a Wurmple, which evolved into a Cascoon and Dustox afterwards. Buizel evolved at level 26 into Floatzel and Shellos into Gastrodon. I got lucky with my pickup Pachirisus, so it didn't took long to get a Duskstone, which I used on Murkrow to evolve it into a Hunchcrow. It took a while, but eventually Cheryl and I reached the end of Eterna Forest, where we split path again. In Eterna City we have now our next gym and roadblock, but we are far from having all Pokemon in this section. After I ran into Cynthia, destroyer of teams and dreams, I traded another Buizel for a Chatot and entered the Great Underground for the first time. If you played the original Diamond and Pearl, you very well remember this place, but this time it's expanded massively. In there we find several caves where Pokemon spawn, and since it's still the Professor Oak challenge, we have to get them all. Also Rogue is here out of his gym again. Does he even get paid for being a gym leader? Well, anyways, roaming the caves, I got two Rolls, one male and female, a Swablu, and a Lickitung. Thanks to picking up a shiny stone, my Rosalia evolved into Roserade, and the capturing of new Pokemon can continue. I got Togepi, Absol, Houndoom, Rhyhorn, Magnemite, and a Cherubi here. In between each session of going underground, I also checked the honey trees after 6 hours. And yes, they are still as terrible as in Diamond and Pearl. Doing so, I got my first honey tree Pokemon, Burmy and actually my first shiny of the run, another Cherubi. Catching Pokemon underground isn't the only thing we have to do, since we need to get some fossil Pokemon and evolution stones here as well. So if you are doing the challenge on your own, prepare yourself for lots of hours of digging up artifacts. Eventually I found my first fossil and continued searching for more underground Pokemon. I got Skorupi, Gligar and Scyther here, along with Ghastly, shout out to Rich as usual, Duskull, Smoochum and Elekid. Thanks to gaining EXP while catching Pokemon, Buneri evolved into Lopunny, and I continued to catch a female Kombi, Krogunk and Swinub with the move Ancient Power, and on Route 211 a Meditite, Hootoot and Ponyta. This was the point where one of my Rals evolved into Curlia, before I got Chainling and Cleffa at Mount Coronet. Now it's mostly evolving Pokemon we got so far and wait for other honey tree Pokemon to show up. Togepi evolved into Togetic and giving it another shiny stone I picked up into Togekiss. Our male Curlia evolved into Gallade, Cleffa into Clefairy after enough happiness and Clefairy into Clefable after a Moonstone. Hootoot evolved into Noctowl as one could expect at level 20 in no time and Lickitung into Licky Licky when knowing rollout. My Combi evolved into Vesper Queen and Shiny Cherubi into Cherum. At this point I decided to make my way back to Orberg, not to chat with Rock, but to get my fossil Pokemon revived into Kranidos. Since it was a Friday I also needed to return to Valley Windworks, where I had the chance to encounter and capture a Drifloon. The last time I remembered about Drifloon was about 15 minutes into Saturday already. Classic. Anyways, I got myself another Burmy from one of the honey trees, and evolved Ghastly into Haunter, 
magnemite into magneton and one of the Burmese into Wormadam, the other into Motham, Smoochum into Jinx, Chingling into Chimeco and Alakid into Electabuzz. I got lucky with one of the honey trees and got myself an Apom and evolved my other Rals into Gardevoir, Kranidos into Rampados, Rhyhorn into Rhydon at level 42, thanks for that game freak and Magneton into Magnezone with a Thunderstone. You can also evolve it by leveling it up in Mount Coronet. Don't do the same stupid mistakes as I do. Driftloon evolved into Driftlim, Apom into Ambipom when learning the move double hit, Ponyta into Rapidash, Meditide into Medicham, Swablu into Altaria, Krogunk into Toxicroak, Duskull into Dusclops, my Ancient Power Swine up into Piloswine and into Mamoswine and Skarupi into Drapion. Remember, we are all still in Section 2, which is insane. After one more day, a Heracross actually showed up on one of my honey trees, and this day was also decisive for the challenge. You see, when I started, there was no way of finding out the special Munchlax trees. As you remember from Diamond and Pearl, based upon your trainer and secret ID, the game gives you four special trees all over Sinnoh, which have a 1% chance to spawn in a Munchlax. And just when I was daily checking the trees, I had available the Munchlax tree predicted rut. Well, I was extremely unlucky and don't have any trees in this section. Now I had to decide. Restart from new after over 90 hours of the challenge or to get it in the next section, because there I would have a Munchlax tree. You may hate me for that, but I decided to go on with my challenge for the fun. I decided that I won't submit my times to the leaderboard and continue with my journey, because let's be honest, it's all about the fun in the end. And it's not like I skipped the Pokemon entirely. Munchlax will give me a hard time in Section 3 anyways. So with 107 Pokemon, don't forget I still have Mew and Jirachi in it, I went back to Eterna City and faced Gardenia, resulting in me getting my second Gym Badge. What a section. I bet there aren't any longer ones. With two badges, now I have access to Cut. Having this ability, there's another galactic problem we solve. Seriously, who plants man-high trees in front of an entrance? Also at this point, I removed Jirachi and Mew from the court Pokemon counter. Fighting through the building and facing Commander Jupiter this time, I managed to free the bike shop owner. And you guessed it, getting a brand new bike in return. With that, I can access Route 206, where I got myself a Stunky and a Bronzo. After a quick chat with Dawn on Route 207, I entered Mount Coronet and ran into this weirdo I'm sure we won't ever meet again in the future. By the way, did you know that Cyrus is 27? The fact that I'm older than Cyrus concerns me and makes me a bit sad at the same time. Well, out of Mount Coronet onto Route 208 and Hard Home City I went. And what I did here was getting myself a Pokemon egg, the Poffin case and the ability to have following Pokemon. And yes, they are still as slow as in Sword and Shield. I ran into Barry before leaving the town east onto Route 209. I captured a Mime Junior, got the good route, and placed an odd stone I found earlier onto this tower. I went to the underground again to find new NPCs to speak to when the egg I got earlier hatched into a Happini. Because I somehow didn't find the oval stone for Happini, I captured Chansey on Route 209 and evolved it into Blissey after enough friendship. I entered the Lost Tower on the same route for experience grinding and got rewarded with the TM for strength. We cannot use it yet though. Solacian Town is just around the corner and with it the Pokemon Breeder, which we have to use later on in some instances. But first I captured an unknown in the ruins here. Passing the town I found myself on Route 210. We cannot advance further north because of the Psydux here, but we make our way east to Route 215 and Veilstone City eventually. No gambling around this time sadly, so we pass the city for now and enter Route 214. I got Girafferic here and moved on to the next town over Valor Lakefront and Route 213. I stayed here to get a Wingull before finding myself in Pastoria City. I like how open the region is in this section. The Great Marsh is located in Pastoria, this is a location which not only annoys me now but also much later in the game as well. For now I use the Safari game to get Wooper. Quagsire, Azuril and Meryl, and Carnivine here, before leaving the town again and heading further west to Route 212. The Pokemon Mansion is located here, and with it the Trophy Garden, 
This is where I capture the Pichu for the dex total along with the Pikachu. And with that, by going north a little bit more, we end up in Heart Home City again, completing the circle we went around Sinnoh. But we are far from done getting new Pokemon, since we got the good rod earlier. Fishing all around Sinnoh, I got myself Goldeen, Baboge, and Affinion. I honestly completely forgot this Pokemon even existed. Back in Solacean Town, I put two Houndoom to the Pokemon Breeder to receive an egg, entered a Rune Maniac's cave to get an Hippopotas, and captured two Remorades on Route 213, because I forgot that earlier. After some training, Wingull evolved into Pelipper, Meryl into Azumarill, Houndour by hatching the egg, Remorade into Octillery, man, I'm missing his prototype sprite from Gen 2, Bronzor into Bronzong, Mime Jr. into Mr. Mime, Stunky into Skunk Tank, Baboge into Whiskash, Finneon into Luminion, Voldine into Sea King, and Hippopotas into Hippowdon. Checking on my Munchlax tree options every single day, around the Christmas day I got lucky and Munchlax decided to finally show up. Only 18 days of checking 3 times daily. For the last 3 Pokemon I entered the underground again and spoke to 32 NPCs, which took like 5 hours. But doing so, Spiritomb showed up in the odd well. And because of all the walking, Munchlax evolved into Snorlax after one level up. And after digging for an even longer time actually, I finally found another Thunderstone for Pikachu to evolve into Raichu. Well, that was a tedious section, but with 141 Pokemon we are now able to take on the next gym, which is Veilstone's gym. After earning our third gym badge we pick up the TM for Fly and, well, there's no new Pokemon for us to get, so we have to get yet another badge, this time it's Pistorius gym badge. After doing so, there's yet another Team Galactic event, which we have to follow. Unfortunately, one hour of my footage got corrupted, and so I cannot exactly show some events. We follow a galactic grunt all the way to Bella Lakefront, where we run into Cynthia once more. She gives us a special medicine for the Psyducks, which blocked her way over on Route 215. After the roadblock is cleared, we move to Celestic Town over the foggy Route 210. Who needs defog anyways? In Celestic Town we meet with Cynthia's grandmother and Cyrus again. While this is kinda boring, like Cyrus, actually so boring that it corrupted my video file it seems, being in Celestic Town also lets us access new areas of the underground. In those I captured two Snorans, one male and female, and evolved them into Glalie and Frostlass respectively. And well, that's it for this section, another very short one. All the way back in Hard Home, all we can do now is facing Fantina for the next gym badge, and so we do. With the abilities to use Fly and Surf now, which makes navigating through Sinnoh a lot easier, we go back to Jubilife City and can now use Surf on Route 218 to get to Canolave City. While being here I caught Tentacool and evolved it into Tentacruel immediately. And while in Canolave City there's yet another rival fight. But Barry and his finds isn't really a threat to us at this point you can imagine. Speaking to the sailor allows us to go to Iron Island, where we meet up with Riley. Similar to Cheryl in Eterna Forest, he stays with us for a while. And while being here, I also caught a Steelix. Riley and I deal with the Galactic Grunt infestation and for doing so I get rewarded with yet another Pokemon egg before we part our ways. I sail back to Canalave and enter the Great Underground again. After a while the egg hatched into a Ryulu, which didn't took too long to evolve into his final form Lucario. And so, with yet another super short section, all we can do in this challenge is to face the next gym leader, Brian, the shovel guy. And as it's tradition in this channel, we have a guest speaker today. Today it's Dime, who's modding my Discord server. Okay, so a quick note before we continue. I'm really happy RJ involved me in this. I've been a big fan of his channel for as long as I can remember. And I'm really happy I could actually talk to him. He's a great guy and here it goes. After obtaining his badge, the story of Diamond continues to play out more. There's an earthquake and we decide to check out the Great Sinnoh Lakes. We'll do that eventually. First we stop by Route 206 to enter the Wayward Cave. In here, Oliver got himself a Gibble and continued to Lake Fowler shortly after. Team Galactic dried out the whole lake for god knows why. And because slowly but surely they are getting on our nerves, he decided to take on the Galactic Commander, Saturn. 
At Lake Variety there's also some galactic members and because we want to know what's going on, it's time to defeat Commander Snickers a second time. While doing so Gibble evolved into a Gabite at level 24. Since we haven't heard anything from Barry in a while, we get the task to go to Lake Acuity in the far north of Sinnoh to check out the man. And so he makes his way to Mount Coronet and onto Route 216. Before he goes there, actually, he stayed for another Pokemon, Feebas. Because it's the same nightmare to catch in all the earlier games, of course it has to be here as well. After using a certain tool online, the link will be found in the description, he found out at which spots Phoebus appears, and he got himself one. At rounds 216 and 217, which are beautiful snowy areas, like no joke, and also one of RJ's favorite routes overall, which is actually kind of funny because it's the same thing for me. He actually enjoyed his time there, and he picked up the TM for Rock Climb, and got a Sneasel and Snover. Couldn't enter Lake Acuity yet until he defeated the next gym leader, so we have to take care of our evolutions now. Phoebus actually was rather simple, and after some failed attempts at puffin making, he got some halfway decent ones, which boosted Phoebus' beauty stats into the stratosphere. After it's high enough and after a level up, Phoebus evolved into Milotic. Snowfree evolved into Obama Snow at level 40, and after some more training on the ground, Gabite evolved into Garchomp at level 48. Which actually wasn't too bad. So before we take on the Snowpoint Gym, there's one more thing we have to do, and people who have played the originals know exactly what it is. There's a certain NPC which trades a Haunter for a Metacham. And because Oliver has a Metacham and wants a Gengar, of course he has to take that trade. So with all of that out of the way, we actually have to fight Candace for a badge to continue with the story. Over at Lake Acuity, Barry got his butt kicked by Commander Jupiter. And after listening to his whining for a while, Team Galactic started to annoy me even more and more. I decided to strike at their heart, at the Galactic HQ in Veilstone. After obtaining the storage key, I fought through numerous runs until I faced Cyrus again. He explained his plan to me, but unfortunately I was watching some TV on the side and he wouldn't explain it to me a second time. Anyways, I got a Master Ball, which I tried not to use, and run into Commander Saturn, who is eventually setting free the Lake Guardians. We enter Mount Coronet yet another time, this time to reach the top. And doing so, it seems that we are about to finally defeat Team Galactic for good. But before we can do that, Cyrus summons up Dialga and it seems that Sinnoh and the whole Pokemon world is about to end. Things get pretty dramatic actually, when Barry and I faced the commanders for a last time, before my final battle with Cyrus. I managed to defeat him and face the mighty beast called Dialga, and yeah, that was kinda anticlimactic. Remember when Pokemon was about having a chill time and just become the champion and not saving the whole world every time? Pepperid from remembers. Back in Celestic Town, we speak with this NPC here to get the DEX entry for Palkia registered. This is necessary because we need to see every Sinnoh Pokemon in order to get a national DEX later. So since I got one legendary, why not get more? At the legs I got Yuxi, Azelf and Mess. oh well, yeah, I forgot that Romas exist. A uh, shout out to Hanger of Rome at this point. Since this is a new Pokemon generation, getting the Roma actually wasn't too bad at all since, well, you can simply save on the route it appears and when doing a soft reset it will stay there. So after a few tries I got Mesperit with a quick ball. Over at the Bello Lake front we are now able to get to Sunny Shore and so we do exactly that and run into Flint of the Elite Four. Before taking care of Wokner, the last gym leader, we go to route 223 and grab a Mantike. When there's also a Remorade in the party, it will evolve into Mantine. Now it's time to go to the underground again, and oh boy, getting all fossils now will take a while. But eventually, after many hours of digging, I found all of them, and revived him into Aerodactyl, Ormonite, Kabuto, Lily, and Anorith. Back in the underground, I trained all of them and made them evolve into Omastar, Kabutops, Cradilly, and Amaldo. And well, with the Pokemon out of the way, 
it is time for the last badge, Wokeness badge in Sunny Shore. So one may think that's basically it, right? Only the Elite Four to face and calling it a day with 172 Pokemon registered. Oh, you are in for a treat. After speaking to Jodo Gym Leader Jasmine, we can now use Waterfall to get to the Elite Four. Arriving at the Pokemon League, we use our newfound ability and get access to the Victory Road. Here I picked up a Razor Claw, which I immediately put to good use to evolve Sneasel into Weewell. I exited Victory Road and entered the Elite Four's main building, so I can fly here later. Because at this point we saw all 150 Sinnoh Pokemon, the master himself, Professor Oak, shows up and our Pokédex gets upgraded to the National Mode. That doesn't sound like much, but the moment we got it, a bunch of more Pokémon became available in the Great Underground. And because the Elite Four is our next big obstacle, we try to get as many Pokémon here as possible before we face them. Buckle up, this will be a long one. In the Great Underground I got Shuckle, Mareep, Oddish, Volbeat, Cacturn, Trico, Venomoth, Ninkada, Paris, Farfetch'd, Primeape, Poliwag, Ekans, Ariados, Vibraba, Weepin Bell, Evolve Mareep into Fluffy, Oddish into Gloom, Gloom into Vileplume, Weepin Bell into Victory Bell, Chikorita, Bulbasaur, Venonat, Cacnea, Evolve Krico into Gruvile, Tropius, Bellsprout, Rollout, Zangoose, Skiplum, Pineco, Ledian, Nasleaf, Evolved Vibraba into Flygon, Cubone, Tyroke, Solrock, Crawdont, Evolved Fluffy into Ampharos, Groval into Sceptile, Piplup, Clamperl, Evolved Poliwag into Poliwall into Polyrath, Paras into Parasect, Cacleon, Nidorino, Caterpie, Skiddy, Pochiana, Dodo, Krabby, Sandrit, Ferret, Evolved Another Gloom into Blossom, Camerupt, Evolved Pineco into Fortress, Cubone into Marowak, Slugma, Piplup into Printplup, Numel, Macago, Ekans into Arbok, Charmander, Cyndaquil, Delibird, Dugan, Laron, Mankey, Mighty Yana, Aaron, Growlithe, Trapinch, Evolve Krabby into Kingler, Zigzagoon, Primplup into Empoleon, Chikorita into Bayleaf, Tauros, Bulbasaur into Ivysaur, Natu, Lavita, Pupita, Baltoy, Kavana, Corsola, Quillfish, Seal, Squirtle, Chinchu, Lantern, Balrhein, Evolved Zigzagoon into Lanoon, Doduo into Dodrio, Ivysaur into Venusaur, Staryu, Mawile, Bayleaf into Meganium, Laron into Agron, Ninkada into Ninjask and Sheninja, be careful, you need to have a regular Pokeball with you for this one to work, Illumisi, Voltorb, Nidorina, yet another Shiny, Grimer, Binet, Nidoran Female, Evolve Charmander into Chameleon, Cyndaquil into Quillava, Ditto, Lipstick Wobbuffet, Drowsy, Evolve Nato into Zatu, Beltoy into Claydol, Snubble, Beldum, Hopip, Sunkern, Evolve Pupita into Tyranita, Radicate, Radita, Chameleon into Merchandise, Quillava into Teflosion, Squirtle into Warthodl, Corpfish, Drowsy into Hypno, Surskit, Dratini, Skiplume into Jumpluff, Mudkip, Beldum into Metang, Caterpie into Metapod, Warthodl into Blastoise, Torchic, Chimchar, Torkoal, Shelder, Kavana into Shapido, Totodile, Metapod into Butterfree, Surskit into Masquerain, Horsey, Fanfi, Metang into Metagross, Dratini into Dragonair, Tangrowth, Weezing, Seedot, Snubble into Granbull, Totodile into Croconaw, Grime into Muck, Voltorb into Electrode, Horsey into Seedra, 
Dragonair into Dragonite, Chimcha into Monferno, Rockona into Feraligator, Fanpy into Donphan, Torchic into Combuscan, Monferno into Infernape, Mudkip into Marstomp, Tyroke into Hitmonchan, Combuscan into Blaziken, Marstomp into Swampert, Nidorino into Nidoking, Nidorina into Nidoqueen, Skiddy into Delcaddy, Growlithe into Arcanine, Staryu to Stami, Shelder into Cloyster, Sunkern into Sunflora, and Nasleaf into Shiftry. Wow. I also had to bred several Pokemon to get their base evolution, and so I got Sfeel, Coughing, Ladiba, Tangela, Spinarak, Nidoran Female, Shuppet, and Nidoran Male. Through breeding some more Tyrogues, I also got Hitmonlee and Hitmontop. I also evolved Sfeel into Celio. Because I got a national Pokedex, Bibi in Hardhome gifts us an Eevee, and you know what that means. Breeding several of them, I got Flareon, Vaporeon, Jolteon, Leafeon, Glacian, Umbreon, and Espeon. Since this is more or less a remake of Gen 4, there is no Sylveon. Over at the Great Marsh in Pastoria and the Trophy Garden, now we have to get some annoying daily Pokemon. Getting those was a nightmare and took weeks. Those Pokemon were Kangaskhan, Plusle, Yanma, Minen, Castform, Bonsly, Execute, Shroomish, Jigglypuff, Meowth, Porygon, Gulpin, Smeargle, Swallow, and Loudred. Of course, we also have to evolve those as well, and so Shroomish evolved into Breloom, Bonsly into Sudowoodoo, Gulpin into Swallowed, Laudred into Xcloud, Meowth into Persian, Yanma into Yanmega, Jigglypuff into Wigglytuff, and Execute into Executor. By breeding, I got Iglybuff, Taillow, and Wismer. For my last Pokémon, I had to go to Eterna Forest again, where, at the old chateau, I found a Rotom. Wow, that was something. 216 Pokémon in one section. But now we did it, 388 Pokémon registered, or 389 if you are playing Shining Pearl, I can now finally take on the Elite Four. First we beat Barry, Aaron, Bertha, Flint, Lucian, and at the very end, Cynthia. And I can tell you, that was a tough fight, with only one of my Pokémon remaining. But I did it, and the challenge is now finally over, right? <laughs> right? Well... There's also the post-game now, and even though we already have 388 Pokémon, there is still more to catch. So let's put in the next gear and prepare for the final run. So after watching the end credits, we wake up in our home again. In Sandgum Town, we just unlocked a new feature of the game, Daily Swarm Pokémon. Exciting, isn't it? Are you kidding me? Yet another Daily Event Pokémon. Well, yes. Speaking with Dawn's sister unlocks them, and now we have to wait day for day until the last 8 swarm Pokémon appear. Fortunately for us, they aren't the only Pokémon left, so we can complete the decks a little bit more first. My first swarm Pokémon was a Dunsparce, so I caught one, and flew to Snowpoint City. A sailor there now takes us to the Battle Zone, a brand new area to explore. The first thing to do there is to pick up the Super Rod, before we go to Route 225 to get ourselves a Fearow and Spearow. I picked up the Razor Fang in the Battle Zone and evolved Gliger into Gliscor. I fished for a Relicant, captured Ductrio and Diglett over at Route 228 and fished at Route 230 for Whalmer and Waylord, and got a Skarmory over at Route 228. I followed the events over at Stark Mountain and upon return was able to catch Heatran. Back at the Victory Road, I helped Marley through the cave in a new area and was able to fish for a Lapras here, as well as a Love Disk over at Route 224. My next daily Pokémon was a Slackoth over at Eterna Forest, and the same day I also caught it and evolved it into Vigoroth. And when I was about to evolve it another time, I encountered my next shiny, a Houndoom. But guess what? My game crashed after I captured it and was about to leave the underground. Well. After getting Vigoroth again, at least I finally evolved it into Slacking at level 24. 
Now having access to the right incense, I used that opportunity to breed Warbuffet and get a why not. At Canalave, a sailor now takes us to a new island, Full Moon Island, and doing so results in Cresselia becoming a new Roma. Originally, I planned on using the Master Ball on it, but honestly, with the way Romas work here, saving and using a Quick Ball maybe took around 5 tries. That was a little bit lame, unfortunately. Because I was in the mood for some more legendary Pokemon, I got myself a Gerontina casually and entered Ramana's Park, southeast of Sandkim Town. In the original games, this is where the Pal Park would have been. In Ramana's Park, you cannot transfer Pokemon over, but instead get some more legendary Pokemon. By exchanging mysterious shards, which you can dig up, you can get different slates, which you can use to summon up legendaries. Doing so, I started with Hoenn and got Registeel, Regirock and Regi-Ice, Regi-Ice, well, yeah, completing the first room. By capturing all three, now in Snowpoint, the temple opens up. Let's get their boss, shall we? A few floors later, we were actually able to find and capture Regigigas. And again, this is basically Gen 4, so no Regidrago and Regilectric. For my next legendaries, I settled on Latias and Latios, completing the next room. I went for Suicune, Entei and Raikou, which in return unlocked Ho-Oh for me. Lugia is unfortunately one of the exclusives. I continued the catching spree by adding Groudon, Kyogre and Rayquaza to the dex total. The last legendary from Romana's Park I got was Mewtwo, and with now 421 Pokemon we are pretty close to completion. All I had to do now was to wait and check daily if I got the right swarm Pokemon, and this took weeks, not even lying. Eventually, I got Electric and evolved it into Manetric. Makuhita was next 3 days later, and I evolved it into Hariyama. After an additional 4 days, Spoink showed up, which I evolved into Grumpig at level 32. 4 days later, I got a Pidgey and evolved it into Pidgeotto and Pidgeot. 6 days after that, Spinder showed up. And 25 days later, my last Pokemon, which was a Nose Pass, finally showed up. All I had to do now was leveling up Nose Pass in Mount Coronet and, with Probo Pass, I got the last Pokemon for the challenge. And so, with 433 Pokemon and after 158 hours, I was able to complete the Professor Oak challenge in Brilliant Diamond. Now let's see what Rowan has to say. Well, nothing it seems. But how about Oak? Have you ever considered that? No, but right now I do consider coming to Kanto and using my bike indoors in your lab. <sighs> Alright, well, that's it for this challenge. Honestly, with this one I didn't have as much fun as with my previous ones, but it was definitely an achievement. Are you doing Elite Challenge right now? What do you think of the video? Please let me know in the comments below. Also, big thanks to my mod Dime, who spoke part of this video, and of course for being there in my server. If you want to join, link is in the description. Also, thanks for everyone who watches my video and or is part of my community. You guys are seriously the best. Well, until the next time. See ya!